I randomized every wild encounter, every trainer, every item, every TM move, and every legendary Pokemon in this Gen 4 Pokemon game, and we're gonna Nuzlocke it. Can we beat the Elite Four using totally random Pokemon? If each one only has one life, I don't have the best track record for it. Let's find out as we attempt a randomized Nuzlocke of Pokemon Soul Silver. If you're not familiar with the rules, we're only using the basics today. Rule number one, you can only catch the first Pokemon you encounter on any given route or area. If you fail, it's considered a forfeited encounter. Number two, each Pokemon only has one life. If Pokemon faints in battle, it's considered unalive and therefore must be released or boxed forever. However, this rule does not take effect until you get your first Pokeballs at the beginning of the game, which might be important later. And number three, you must nickname every encounter you get in an effort to grow more attached. You really, you really want it to hurt. This was handled by chat since I was live on Twitch for the entirety of this playthrough. With that established, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you do, maybe consider subscribing. I have a couple more challenges on in the pipeline that should come out pretty soon. So with that said, let's jump into it. We start our journey today like any other. We get up, we talk to our mom about how to use a cell phone, and they get punched in the gut by the neighbor kid's Meryl, taking a moment to recover. We meet with the professor who has a task for us. He asks us to take one of the Pokemon from his pedestal with us to meet Mr. Pokemon, who has an egg the professor wants to see. And of course, I left this up to chat, so chat decides we get to take Girafferig. Now we just need a nickname. We named it Jerfrig, and we're on our way. A quick meeting with Mr. Pokemon and Professor Oak, and we're on our way back with an egg in tow. On the way back, we run into a young lad who proceeds to pound us into a fine dust using his legendary Heatran. It's okay though, because we didn't have Pokeballs yet, so it didn't actually count. I'm gonna need some backup to deal with him later though. So we asked the neighbor boy to show us how to catch some Pokemon. Our first new team member is a Caterpie named Softbug, followed by a Nidoran male named Nidowalk, a Sfeel named Pixel, and a Bellsprout named Liberty. We almost had a Metagross, but it's okay. Didn't really want it anyway. Oh, and Charmander had also eluded us. I did, however, catch a Mary in Sprout Tower. It was here that I came face to face with him again. Thankfully, he had no plans to end our lock today, and we talked to the sage who gave us some words of wisdom. He told me to make sure that you have liked and subscribed. Now, that's some good advice right there. Now it's time to take on our first real challenge of the run, Faulkner. Oh, no, I'm, I'm sorry. I mean, Antoinette. Softbug, who is no longer a small worm, is also not here to play any games. We open up with sleep powder to ensure that we don't take too much damage before styling on him with a muddy water. Antionette retaliates with a Perugly, who tries to put me to sleep, but we dodge and we fire back with sleep of our own. Following that up with a muddy water, try to drop some accuracy, two more, and the battle is decided. I can only hope the rest of our journey goes this easily. On our way to the next town, we encounter an Espeon, who of course gets named, not Umbreon, and we decide to hatch the egg received from Professor Realm. It turns out to contain a Mistrevis, which we name Bloody Mary. In the cave, we encounter Lucario, but my controller glitched or something and I ran away from it by accident while trying to get into my bag. Amps evolved, so that's cool, I guess. And outside of the cave, we grab the Dratini named Hermes, which I expect will become a bit of a powerhouse for the team because it gets Dragon Rage pretty early. We also catch an Electric and name a Bolt inside of the Slowpoke Well, and then it's time to grind. The goal was to get the whole team to around level 15, which would put us on par with the Gym Leader's Ace. After, we take care of Team Rocket and the Slowpoke Well. We made quick work of them, but heading back into Zalia Town, I walked a little bit too close to the gate, and... Oh no! Oh no, oh no! I thought I thought he was I thought he was scheduled for after the gym! I thought he was scheduled for after the gym! We don't even have Dragon Rage yet! I'm not ready! See what his opener is. See, see what his opener is. And then we gotta strategize. All right, I need everyone's brain cells turned on, please. Okay, he has a Riolu. We can handle that pretty easily. It's gonna have counter, I think, as it's only attacking move. So, and, let, and someone wants to double check that, that'd be wonderful, but he's level 14, dude. We're gonna Thunder Wave instead. He's, oh, yeah, he's gonna endure. That's fine. Everyone's brain cells turned on, please. How do we take out a Heatran in our current state? We're gonna give, we're gonna give Hermes this experience. I just wanted to go grind in the forest, dude. That's the highest level Pokemon we have available to us right now. We may have Force Palm? That's okay. That doesn't KO us. And I think it only had Counter. Or else it would have gone for Force Palm. Dugong! Dugong uh, is a problem for Hermes. We're not doing that. Does it have an Ice type move at this, age, at this level? This age? Level 16? That's Icy Wind. Okay. And that's Growl. Alright, we're hitting him with a Paralysis, so we're hopefully gonna be chilling. His, this isn't even his ace and he's level 16. Is his ace going to be level 20? Okay. All right. All right. I'm putting my controller down. I'm not touching anything until we can just decide. Actually, hold on. I'm going to go into Pokemon. 
And I'm not touching anything until we decide what we're doing. Okay, so we're, we are... We're looking pretty good, all things considered. He's level 18. Heatran at level 18. Someone check its moveset, please. We need to know exactly what it has. Uh, I think I, we can hit it with the paralysis, but that means we can't sleep it later. Oh, it has ancient power. Probably fire spin and metal claw, right? Ancient power, leer, fire fang. Okay. I think chances are we're going to end up needing to sacrifice someone. And the two Pokemon I'm most comfortable with sacrificing would be Amps and Softbug only because we have tight backups in the PC. Needle Walk also actually might not be terrible because we need, we need a Moonstone to evolve it anyway. Okay, it has five Ancient Powers. Other than that, it has to use Fire Fang, so we could growl the shit out of it too. Oh my gosh, Fire Fang still does so much! Does anybody else want to come in and growl it? <laughs> Alright, I think that's... Is that minus six now? No, that's minus six then. Okay. Mm, that's his last Ancient Power though. I think. It's not! It's not his last inch of power! We muddy water! We muddy water! We muddy water! <laughs> I knew it'd be the clutch! Oh. <laughs> I'm just glad we got through that. Oh. I was an absolute shock that we made it through that encounter at all. We shake it off and we head to the next gym to meet Bugsy. Oh shoot, I I'm sorry, I did it again. I mean, Stacy. We led with Liberty, hoping to get some sleep on something and to start growthing, but I never expected the mirror match. So I swapped into Softbug, who gets put to sleep immediately. I am eating up razor leaves though, so I stay in and I wait to wake up, eventually putting the victory bell to sleep. I had forgotten that in this generation, grass does not immune to powder moves, so. A couple of gusts and it's gone, leading us to our next problem, Jinx. It also puts me to sleep, but I wake up first turn and confuse it. Astonish does a lot, but it's faster than me. I decide to risk it. It breaks through the confusion, but misses its attack and I take it out. Last but not least, Analyst Stacy pulls out a Butterfree. We send out Hermes, who now has Dragon Rage, to give him a chance to shine. Right away, he gets put to sleep. However, we get the first turn wake up things to shed skin, and a turn two, one Dragon Rage is enough to clear the fight and the gym, earning us our second gym badge. On our way through the forest, we grab the TM for Headbutt. With this, there is now a new encounter available to us. However, our Headbutt encounter is just a Spiro. We named him Gus, Guardian of the PC, and we move on to Route 34, where we snag a Nidoran female. Honestly, I wasn't sure if this was dupes or species, but I caught it anyway for backup. Her name is Yagnaval. Then we grab the Spiro, holding a letter from the guard in the gatehouse, which turned out to be a Zangoose. Still named Kenya though. Farther north, we find a Krabby named Patty, a Doduo named Valentina, and a national park? This thing explodes. It, it did. No grinding is necessary this time though, so we jump straight into our next battle with Whitney. Or, um, pie? Sounds delicious. She leads with an Ampharos versus my Girafferig. We trade Psybeams and Thundershocks until Jerfrig comes out on top. Up next is a Huntail, and I don't really remember what this Pokemon does. To play it safe, I decide to swap out to Softbug and put it to sleep. Uh, however, it had a berry to counter me, and Water Pulse hurts, leaving us confused. Amps feels like the obvious switch here, eating up a bite and leaving a Huntail with Paralysis with our static ability. Thundershock puts it to the red, but we take a water pulse in return. She super potions, and I try to take it out with another Thundershock. I guess I wasn't paying close enough attention. Honestly, in hindsight, I think it's just a high roll, but... What? This is the first death that hurts, but Ams had been a champ for a while now. And just to rub it in, she super potions again. Three vine whips and a paraturn is enough to spell its doom and wins our third gym badge. We had a quick service for amps, and we decided to swap up the team a little bit, adding Kenya, the Zangoose, Bolt, the Electrike, and Patty, the Krabby. On our way to Ecruteak City, we actually stopped to water this odd looking tree. It turns out that it was a Weedle named Potter. But then as we continued traveling, disaster and tragedy struck, and their names were cute couple, May and Emma. All right, Giraffe Ray's now the fastest thing in the field. Now we're confused as well, and now Kenya's asleep. The, the status is, dude. Kenya woke up. Hurt herself in confusion. No, giraffe rig! No, 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 no. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. You pick that hail back up right now! I swear to goodness! With sadness in our hearts, we replaced Jerfrig with not Umbreon and started looking for some more encounters 
before grinding for the upcoming ghost gym. On Route 38, we grabbed a Bidoof named Chonky Tooths. Mountain Mortar brings us a Pincer named Hulk. Route 39 is a Grand Bull named Pitbull. Burn Tower gifted a Vigoroth named Bigfoot. While we were here, we got into a scuffle with Comp. This time, however, I was not caught off guard and had a plan. Ghost Rider Comp with a Nuzleaf. All right, he gets Nature Power Rock Slide? Come on, rude, rude, very rude. We over leveled, which means we have to be actually cautious about how much experience we're getting right now. Uh, because I've set myself a level cap for each gym. We are not allowed to go past the ace of the uh, gym leader's Pokemon. And since we were prepping for the ghost type gym, I forgot we had this part to do. Uh, we have prepped for level 25. And okay, that hurt more than I was actually expecting, Kangaskhan. I'll give you that. But now we go back into Bloody Mary because we're completely immune to it. And it's not a problem. You know, I'm trying to position myself uh, for the fact that I know he has a Heatran, because that was his starter. This is this is what I was worried about. I'm basically just going to growl it, make those fire things less scary. So now it's pretty much going to be going for special attacks. So who's our... Alright, Bloody Mary is the most Bedef heavy, it looks like. Followed very closely by Umbreon. I'd like to go into Patty. But with 23 special defense, I feel like that's going to be rough. I know I'm I'm probably playing like way, way too safe here. But we're going to sand attack the heck out of this thing's face too. So we're, we're banking on it just missing ancient powers is the plan. Just miss the ancient powers. Because I know I'm tanking a fire fang. Easy. That's two, that's two successful leers. I'm trying to keep tabs on that too. Yep, that's why I didn't want to take those. I'm a little bit worried because Bubble Beam doesn't look like it's going to KO and it would he would heal. Perfectly executed, team. You nailed it. 10 out of 10. Now, with that handled and some quick grinding out of the way, this is our plan. If we have a physical attacker on the field, we go into Pitbull, we charm, we lower it to attack all the way down, we heal up, and then I think we go into Kenya, set up, and hope to just sweep away. On to the ghost gym. Marty won't know what hit him. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. A uh, pie again? Quillfish versus Hermes. Of course, the fish starts to minimize, but Hermes sees right through its shenanigans and lands two dragon rages anyway. Pie follows up with a scissor, who's doing quite a lot of damage with Metal Claw, so we swap Hermes out into Pitbull, whose Intimidate marks the beginning of our strat. We drop the scissor to minus six attack, and then switch into Kenya, who boosts up to plus six for an easy sweep. After that win, we went on a fishing frenzy for encounters. Starting in Olivine City, we fish up a Chinchow named Conductor, and then back to Ecritique to find a ferret named Hellgate, and then further back to Goldenrod to get Bill's Eevee, which turned out to be a Sableye named Marty. After that, it was off to Violet City to claim a Spinarak named Gwen, and then all the way back to Cherry Grove for a Corefish named Robes Pierre. Let's take a break from the action and get an in memoriam shot for the yearbook, uh, just in case. Nothing's gonna happen, right? All right, time to get started on the next quest. We head up the tower to talk to the lady with the six sheep, just so we can unlock the ability to then head back down moments later and backtrack once again to get Surf, which I forgot to grab in Equitique City. Now that we can ride the waves, it's time to grab our Route 40 encounter, which is a Sun Kern named Sunkist. Route 41, however, I failed to notice the route change and knocked out my Ninetales encounter. Actually, evolving Patty in the process. In Sea and Wood, we grab the Secret Potion and then steal this dude's Pikachu named Chucky. But this reminds me to grab our fishing encounter in Sea and Wood too, which was a Vaporeon named Squish. Uh, speaking of water dogs, is that a Suicune? Oh, and now this guy wants to have a battle. What, he thinks I was hitting on a Suicune or something? Su Suicune? Oh no, wait, hold on. Wait, are we in trouble? Hermes! Honestly, I, I have no idea what I was thinking in that fight. That was probably the most avoidable death in this whole run. Kenya does get revenge though and cleans up the fight, allowing us to go and lay Hermes to rest. Placing him with Gwyn, which adds two new typings to the team. <laughs> but at what cost? After some grinding, we're ready to take on the fighting gym leader, Chuck. You know what? I'm just gonna stop trying to remember people's names. 
Analyst Anne leads with a Huntail, which gives me flashbacks. Luckily, this is a physical Pokemon, so it's easy for her to set up our Sword Stand strat. We get it to minus five before swapping because it has Brine, which if you don't know, doubles the damage when a Pokemon's below half HP. And it's because of this threat of Brine that Kenya only gets one Sword Stance up, which is absolutely plenty to take out the Huntail. However, the follow-up Typhlosion is a different story. I think we win. It survives? Don't tell me this KOs. Kenya! Patty was able to come in and wash the troublemaker away. But the damage had been done. This island had taken two Pokemon from us, and I wasn't about to give it any more. The run just would not be the same after that. With the storm badge secured and the ability to fly, we take Valentina the Doduo from the box and head back to Olivine City to heal up the Ampharos atop the lighthouse. This opens up some new areas to explore. Which means new encounters, like this Glaceon named Finland, or this Eradicate we found in Safari Park, which did run away. But on Route 42, we find... Oh boy! We named her Hades. She got swooped up from the PC box immediately, replacing Mistrevis, who, without a Dust Stone or Eviolite, was kind of nearing the end of her usefulness as a wall. Next up, we had Route 43 and the Lake of Rage to snag a Smeargle named Vincent and a Surskit named Maya, respectively. But there was a weird red snake lurking in the middle of the lake. I decided to ride up and ask what was wrong when I'll pop the tiny purple fish. All right, now it turns out the Gyarados, or whatever it's randomized into, is guaranteed shiny. But I didn't know that at the time, and I, and I still got a little excited. We named her Grace, and we move on to Route 46, where we got a muck named Francis, after which we book it back home to grab a Chansey named Joy, and a Milotic named Evanescence. And a quick dip into Tojo Falls grants us a Mantike named Sarah. After some grinding, my game crashing, and then grinding again, the team is looking a bit different. So let's do a quick team recap. So now we have Evan Sense, who is apparently holding a shining leaf, whatever that means. Where Hades, level 30, Adamant Nature Heatran, Marty, Black Glasses, Careful Nature, Gwen, Lax, Wide Lens, Pitbull, 33, Silk Scarf, not Umbreon, Twisted Spoon, Adamant Nature, awful. All right, let's, whoa, okay, that was a murder, and now I'm a witness, fantastic. We do clear some grunts just to come face to face with the scariest rival I have ever had. Thankfully, he had somewhere else to be. So you just show up to give me a heart attack? Continuing to explore, we find the TM for Spatial Rend. It's pretty cool. But it's time to take on the Team Rocket admin that's been causing problems here. Gentleman Chloe, who was kind of a pushover. So let's just breeze past that part to where a Marowak lets us into the top secret and dangerous electrical system because it's feeling mischievous. Before I could do anything, however, Ariana Grande tries to stop me with her double battle. Ugh. I got the Madman as my teammate. We swap into Pitbull, fearing the flying type move from Doduo on Gwen. A couple of rollouts from Lance's Cyndaquil and bites from Pitbull do the trick, leading us then to a choice. Do we count each static electrode as its own encounter or just one of them as our encounter for the area? I actually would like to know what you think the right answer would be here down in the comments below. After some deliberation with chat, I decided to take each as its own static encounter, adding an Elekid named El Adult, a Needle Queen named Gretchen, and a Zatu named Heimdall to the PC warmers. With Team Rocket out of the way for now, we lock sights on the Ice Type Gym and its capital icicle, Price, who leads with a Sand Slash. It's doing too much with Cross Claw for us to heal off with Gwen, and leech life. So we swap into Marty, who clicks fake out for chip damage for wiping up with a faint attack crit. Next is Qualava. So we swap to Hades, who has flash fire and an ancient power to make this fight easy. Last but not least, Miss Magius, which was no match for Crunch. Webster Willow Price, is his full legal name by the way, confirmed, seemingly didn't get the memo because he kept spamming full restores. Four crunches later and the glacier badge is mine. As I've already mentioned, I'm trying to limit myself by making sure that I don't overlevel past the ace Pokemon for the next gym. But because of this game's weird pacing, we're currently going from Price, whose ace is level 34, to the next gym, Jasmine, who's level 35, which means I have to go straight there. Stacy here leads with a Witch Cash, which catches a fake out and a few faint attacks before I swap into Evanescence to finish it up with Surf. Next up is a Swampert, which I sing to avoid any big damage, while I chip away with Whirlpool. Paired with a few Surfs, it's enough to take it out no problem. Saving the best for last. Stacy pulls out a Wurmple. Oh no, not the Ace Wurmple. What are we gonna do? How will we ever prevail? Now it's off the Goldenrod to deal with some more Troublemakers. How better to defeat them than from the inside out? It almost worked too, if it wasn't for this meddling comp. And this is, they didn't, they didn't make this change until Gen 7, I think, right? So I can't like, I can't even swap out. 
No. Marty. You're not strong enough to KO. You're not you're not strong enough to KO. You're not strong enough to do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. No! Ah! I fully blame Calm for that death. Marty had become a bit of a fan favorite, so this stung a little. We hesitantly replace him with Gretchen, the Needle Queen, and get back to work, because this evil team won't defeat itself. Before that, however, let's grab some new moves for Needle Queen. Her level up moveset is abysmal. All right, now to the underground warehouse where he appears again. His total dial was easy work for Pitbull, with just one headbutt doing the trick. Follows up with a Mag Mortar, which means we swap into Hades for the Flash Fire and Ancient Power combo again, producing an easy cleanup. Now for the main event. We start off this mirror match by attempting to lower its defense with Leer. Negative three defense is enough for three crunches to do the trick, making this match a bit of a Heatran diff, as his Heatran didn't have crunch yet. And after we fire fing the B drill, it brings in a Feebas, which goes down to a crunch. Man, it feels good to rock this guy after what he did to Marty. After solving the puzzle, we were rewarded with a found a master ball. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> with the key card we got from the weird guy in the basement, it's time to take on the Team Rocket admin, Archer. He has a Nuzleaf and Ladybug that Gwen takes out easy, but does take some damage in the process. So to be safe, I swap into Evanescence to finish the wish cache, granting us the silver wing. You know what that means. But before we can do that, there's some encounters that I want to grab, like this Scizor on Route 44 named Scarlet, and this Krikatoon in Ice Path named Debussy. And after making it to Blackthorn City, we head down to Route 45 to grab a Glalie named Shalila. It's time to take on the Dragon Gym Leader, Claire. Usually this is a pretty hard fight, so I'm excited to see what she's got for us today. Daniel leads with a Quagsire, which not Umbreon looks like it can handle, but after Amnesia and a Hyper Potion, Earthquake is a little too risky to stay in on. So Evanescence takes the stage to clean up with a few Surfs. Next is a Snorlax, and with low HP on Milotic, we decide to swap into Pitbull to be safe. But a crit Body Slam almost takes Granbull away from us anyway. This puts us in a really rough position because half our team is already well below half HP, and this is only her second Pokemon. But we need a plan. I decide to fish for the ancient power boosts on Hades, hoping her last Pokemon is not a ground or water type. Surprisingly, we get the boost, and Snorlax goes down to one fire fight. But it's just one thing after another with Dan, and she sends in Kingdra. Obviously, we can't stay in, not with a para and low health. But we only have two Pokemon left with high enough HP to take a hit, and one of them's weak to water. But can we take a can we take a Hydro Pump? That's really the question here. Can anyone on my team actually take a Hydro Pump right now? I think Scarlet's are only possible tanker of a Hydro Pump, but I don't even know if we outspeed. She does not. But what she does have is a high crit ratio move and a plucky attitude. And that was enough to give this lock a chance. Gretchen is our last hope against this Honchkrow. Body Slam is not doing a lot, and the Honchkrow sets up a nasty plot. But with nothing short of a stroke of luck, the crow hits us with a swagger, boosting our attack stat, but confusing us. It's a gamble for sure, but I don't really see another way out. So we roll the dice and go for the body slam. Gretchen! Coming through! I can't believe we made it out of that alive. To add insult to injury, Daniel decides not to give us our badge and throws a fit instead. So we travel to the cave behind her workplace to tattle to her grandpa. He likes us more than her, so he forces Dan to give up the badge. After getting an urgent telegram from the professor, we head home to visit him. Apparently he had a master ball he wanted to give us. Appreciate the gesture, but I already got one off the floor, man. This was not worth calling me multiple times. Now it's off to Equitique City once again to prove ourselves to the protectors of Lugia the Kimono Sisters. After defeating all of them, I was awarded with the Tidal Bell. This opens up Whirl Islands, meaning we have two more encounters to grab. First up... What? Legendary encounter music? Level 24 Entei. Okay. We used a Master Ball on it and named it... Is this a Flareon? <laughs> it's good. Do, do with that what you will. The moment I've all been waiting for. After a beautiful dance that you have to do or it doesn't work. I got it. I hope you guys are spinning too. I'm getting dizzy. <laughs> I hope you guys are spinning too. We gotta summon this Lugia. All right. And honestly, a pretty sick cutscene for the time. Our randomized legendary encounter is here. And it's gonna be a uh, shiny legendary. First try. Ready? Okay, real quick, pause the video and play along with me. I'm gonna play the cry and I want you guys to guess in the comments down below what you think this Pokemon is before it pops up. What was that cry? All right, you got you got your guess. Okay, roll the clips. Huh? 
<laughs> it was, it was a dark cry. <laughs> dark Void Dark Rai is going on the team. I hope you guys know that, that that's happening. After a long struggle at not wanting to stay in a ball, Chad convinced me it was time to use our last Master Ball. And it's only fitting that we named this one after my one and only Patreon, Nightmare T. See if you can spot him in the comments down below. He's always up to something down there. Last stop, the Elite Four. But not before our last rival fight. All right, comp, this is the final showdown. Leading with a War Turtle, my favorite mid-stage starter, by the way. And then a Hoot Hoot, that both get one shot by Pitbull and Strength. Third is a Gastrodon, goes down to two Strengths from Pitbull. Then with Spinda, we go back to one-shotting. But then, Heatran hits the field. However, we do have a plan for this guy now. So we go straight for the charm. But after seeing how much Fire Fang is doing, I decided to play it safe and swap out to avoid the crit. Going into Gretchen, at minus two attack, Fire Fang is doing so little that I basically heal it off with Black Sludge. And then I'm able to one-shot the Heatran with Earth Power, the TM that I bought in the department store. Last up is a Dusclops, which we poison with Poison Stick off the rip. For funsies, I swap into our new Dark Ride to faint attack it, since Nightmare T had not seen battle yet. That was enough to send Comp packing and catapult us to the Elite Four. With the final leg of our journey at hand, let's do one last team recap for our soon-to-be champion team. Moving into this, so we got Pitbull with the Silk Scarf, Intimidate Ability, and we're rocking the move Strength Crunch, Extreme Speed, Charm, which I actually am going to put that right there. Then we got Nightmare T with the Wide Lens to boost that accuracy just a little bit, with the ability Bad Dreams, rocking the moves Faint Attack, Special Rand, Hypnosis, and Double Team, which we learned while grinding. Scarlet with Swarm as our ability, Holding Choice Band, rocking the moves Metal Claw, X Scissor, Night Slash and Needle Arm. Hades, holding the charcoal, rocking Flash Fire, rocking Lava Plume, which we learned while grinding, Crunch, Ancient Power, and Leer. Then we got Evanescence with the Mystic Water, Marvel Scale Ability, rocking Surf, Aurora Beam, Sing, and Recover. Last but not least, we got Gretchen with the Poison Point, holding the Black Sludge for a little bit of recovery, rocking the moves Earth Power, Poison Sting, Body Slam, and Tail Whip. Let's not waste any more time. First off is Champion Mike, who leads with a Ledian against my Pitbull. One strength is enough for not just Ledian, but also the follow-up Spinarak. Obama Snow comes in and hits Pitbull with a big wood hammer. But once again, strength is enough for the Oko. Now facing down an Intimidate Arcanine makes us have to swap. Bringing Evanescence onto the field, who hits one Surf to settle the fight. Last up is Miss Magius who almost goes down to a Surf and Hail combo, but hangs on to hit the full restore. Predicting it this time, I go for recover to make sure we're on equal footing. With Milo Tick fully healed, I bring out Nightmare T to finish the battle with a faint attack. That's one down, four to go. Next is Champion Dudley, who leads with a baby Obama Snow. Obviously, strength is enough to KO, but the Hail could prove to be annoying if this fight becomes drawn out. Next up is a Scyther. So to flex, we send in Scarlet. But we start setting up double teams. With two evasion boosts up, Scarlet is having none of it, and lands an X-Scissor. That combined with Hail is almost enough to take it out, leaving it on a sliver, which of course means it heals up, so I swap into Darkrai, because it has faint attack that can't miss. Now, I know that this is a Bug-type Pokemon versus a Dark-type Pokemon. I know that I'm weak to the X-Scissor, but I think I can take a hit, and I definitely need to make sure I do some damage. Which, I mean, I wasn't wrong, but it was a little too close for comfort. Time to switch into Gretchen, who poisons the Scyther with a Poison Point ability, meaning this thing's now on a pretty short timer. After a few turns of waiting, Poison mixed with Hail is enough to take it out. Gretchen's looking a little bit rough. Quickatune hits the field, so I send Scarlet back out to fish for the Metal Claw boost. No luck this time, but the next opponent is a Nidoran female. Still no boosts, and out comes the last Pokemon, Victory Bell. I can... I can almost hear it. Scarlet is looking a bit worn down, so we swap into Hades, who gets put to sleep on the spot. However, Victory Bell is basically doing no damage, so I wait out to sleep and hit it with a big lava plume as payback. That's two down. We heal up to get ready for the next challenger, Champion Cristiano. Now, that's a name. He leads with a Need Arena that gets one shot by Metal Claw, but taking it from 0 to 100, he retaliates with a Charizard. Ai Chihuahua! Luckily, we have Hades to eat up flamethrowers in times like this. Ancient Power is four times super effective, so Char is long gone when he sends out Absol. Obvious choice here is to go back into Scarlet, since Scizor does resist Dark in this generation, and hits it super effectively with x -Scissor. However, Absol gets to set up three double teams before we land an attack. That one shot is all we needed. Next is Bayonet, that takes a sizable chunk from x -Scissor and heals off with a Held Berry. I'm not confident that another KO's here, so I swapped into Darkrai to make things easy with Faint Attack. The last up is a Rose Raid. Hades makes quick work with Lava Plume. That's three out of four. 
champion Jake Wellen. These names just keep getting fancier. Leading with a whooper, I was terrified, but two Metal Claws is enough. Sending out Skunk Tank. I know this Pokemon gets Flamethrower. I swap into Hades to soak it up and Lava Plume this stinky girl. Surprisingly, that's not quite enough to take it out and actually causes the AI to switch out. Lumineon takes the Ancient Power pretty well, so I decide to send Scarlet back in, who gets the knockout with Metal Claw. But this causes the skunk to come back in. Now, I might have been feeling just a little bit too comfortable. I know this thing has flamethrower. I'm almost sure I can outspeed it. We'd probably outspeed. The choice band metal claw. Okay, correction. That's the most unnecessary death of this run. We can't let it be in vain. We must push on. Rhyperior is next to hit the field, and Milotic is quick to force an exit with Surf, leaving only a Beldum, which meets the same fate. Only one more fight left, and we are one team member down. We heal up the remaining wounded and scutter forth to face our last battle of the lock. We've come so far, and I've conquered so much, but losing so many along the way. We can't let this end before the credits roll. We must make all their sacrifices be worth something bigger than themselves. We have to win this. It's with a heavy heart we speak to Technician Joe. He's already notorious for his quick and lethal hands. Will he attempt the same on us? He leads with a B-barrel, and I have an idea. I put the doof to sleep and started setting up double teams for myself. Cheap, I know, but all's fair in love and war. I get what I deserve though. After getting to plus six, he hits me with a yawn, which means I have to choose between swapping out and losing my boosts or falling asleep. I decide to risk it, getting hit by a big takedown in my sleep. Not willing to sack Nightmare T, I sent in Pitbull to strength this thing away, but it puts another Pokemon to sleep in the process. Now with two Pokemon useless, Kabutops hits the field. I send in Evanescence to try and surf it away, but a crit slash brings me down to the red before I could remove the threat. Thankfully, there's a small reprieve with a Grottle coming in next. An easy target for Lava Bloom. Dustclops joins the battle, so I send in Pitbull to try to wall this thing with its immunity to Ghost until Pitbull can wake up. But Mean Look, paired with Curse, has other plans. And I can't switch out. I'm mean looked in. Lovely. A surf from my Lodic is enough to finish, but there are still two Pokemon left. They could be anything, so this is far from over. Out comes Nino Reno. So given the clear opportunity, we heal up with recover while it poison jabs and sets up toxic spikes. Thankfully, not poisoning anyone in the process. But barely holding on after a surf means it gets a chance to full restore and then flatter me. I'm nothing if not an entertainer, so I risk it for the biscuit and manage to land an Aurora Bean. It's not enough though, and chat reminds me that I have a great counter to this Pokemon in the back, so I send in Gretchen to finish up the fight. Now the final round. The Pokemon, the whole run has been leading up to. The ace of all aces, the big kahuna, Combi. And just like the big bad Pokemon it is, it survived two body slams and a paralysis, getting the full restore off before Gretchen could finally take it down with body slam, securing the fight and the lock. And there you have it. That is how I, Gyronic, managed to beat a randomized Nuzlocke of Pokemon Heart Gold live on stream. If you guys enjoyed this video, please don't forget to hit that like button before you head out and subscribe if you guys are indeed new around here because we're still on the way to a thousand subscribers and we're currently sitting at a 99% unsubscribed viewer rate. So that's probably you. And I need you guys to leave me a comment down below on what you want me to do next. I have some ideas, stuff I'd like to do with Pokemon Fire Red. Maybe that could be my next challenge, but I wanna hear what you guys have to say. Before anything else comes out though, I am currently already over the halfway point on a badge quest in Pokemon Violet, so that'll probably be our next big video. And I'm working on that live on Twitch. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. Check it out. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go back to hiding in the closet. It's scary outside.